A lot of companies contact us asking what is a breakthrough device or they think they have a breakthrough device and they want to submit it to the FDA and they want our help. So initially when they first started the breakthrough device designation program, there were some plans. And the number one plan was we're going to help these new products get reimbursed through CMS or, um, or other programs. And unfortunately, a lot of the bills that were planned never got approved. So unfortunately, a lot of the rumors, and you'll even see some videos out there, oh, you'll get reimbursement right away as soon as they grant the uh, device approval by the FDA. That's not the case, or at least not the case yet. So if you are interested in a breakthrough device designation, that doesn't mean it's a waste of your time. It's just that isn't part of the benefit. There are two primary benefits. Number one, if you meet the criteria for a breakthrough designation, that means your technology is a breakthrough. There, or there's no approved or cleared alternatives for your technology. So there's no way to treat patients except your device, which isn't approved yet. There could be significant advantages over other technology out there. The availability might be in the best interest of the patient. Maybe uh, the current technology is not convenient for the patients. They have to go to the hospital to get that treatment, and yours is a home use device. Those could be an example of making it available, being in the benefits of the patient. But the key factor in whether your device is a breakthrough device or not is, is your device something that's going to save lives? Is this something that is going to prevent permanent disability um, to patients? If your device isn't going to achieve those kind of um, levels of benefit, then your device won't be a breakthrough device designation. There's another program, a STEP program, um, where it talks about improvements in medical devices. So if your device is a significant improvement in a device, then your device might be eligible for the STEP program. And it has the same kind of benefits. But if you are interested in the breakthrough device designation program, your, your device has to be for life-threatening or permanently dis uh, disability, um, debilitating diseases. And if your device isn't, then it's not eligible for that program. So what is the breakthrough device designation program? It's a way the FDA is trying to help companies um, get through the FDA process faster, trying to make those important devices available to patients sooner. So one of the ways that they do that is they identify this is a breakthrough device. By giving you a letter and announcing that, that's actually going to help you when you're trying to do fundraising and any kind of investor support or other vendors that you're looking at, they're much more apt to help a company that's got a breakthrough device that the FDA has said this is a breakthrough device than one that's not. So when you want to go do a clinical study, um, you're going to have a lot better chance of getting this through and get a lot more attention from all parties involved if you have breakthrough than if you don't. It doesn't mean you can't. It just will go faster and easier if you have that. No guarantees. But I can, I can say from the companies that we've helped get breakthrough de device designation, they've said it was a significant help for them in fundraising and to support the clinical studies that they had to do. So that was number one. Number two benefit is you're going to have this identified as a breakthrough device at the FDA. So therefore, you're going to have senior management involved in this and making sure it doesn't slip through the cracks, make sure that, that procedures are followed so you can get that product to market. They don't give you any breaks. They just make sure there aren't any slip-ups or anything that would cause a delay you know, um, in the process. So if there's something about your device that is um, very different from other devices and it's causing, uh, making it difficult for the team at the FD to review it, they'll do what they can within the system to make sure that that they have the right people assigned to your project to understand your technology so it can be reviewed properly. And the last piece, probably the biggest tangible benefit of the entire program is the benefit of the ability to submit for sprints instead of a traditional pre-sub. 
In the past, pre-subs were very, very slow. The timeline for a pre-sub has shrunk, and now they're very consistently getting pre-subs done within 75 days. Um, they give you an email response within 70 days and a final teleconference within 75 days. But if you have breakthrough designation, you're eligible for sprints. So you you would when you first get um, the breakthrough designation, you would submit to the FDA your plan for the sprints. That could be in a in a um, meeting with the FDA, teleconference or email. But once you agree on a plan for submitting these sprints, you can get um, submit a sprint for any one particular technical topic and get the entire response and, and feedback from the FDA completed in 45 days instead of 75 days. So that's a 30-day reduction in your timeline. And a lot of these breakthrough devices, they require a clinical study, they'll require human factors testing, there, there might be additional non-clinical benchtop testing that need, needs to be done. A lot of times biocompatibility or cybersecurity needs to be done. With each of these different tests, um, you're going to want to get the answers back from the FDA as quickly as possible, and you have to might have to submit multiple times. So if you have three or four pre-subs that you're doing, and each of those is 75 days, that's going to take you probably as much as a year to complete the entire process. When you have the sprints as an option, you can chop 30 days off each one. So you just gain yourself a quarter in the timeline, just getting FDA feedback. So that's a big benefit. So your benefits are, number one, this golden halo that we are a breakthrough device and that will attract partners and investors. Number two, you're identified as breakthrough within the FDA. So they're going to make sure that your project doesn't get stalled. And third, the most important, you chop 30 days off of each uh, review by doing a sprint instead of a pre-sub. So those are the benefits of a breakthrough device designation. Unfortunately, no one re reimbursement benefits at this time. And if you're interested in the STEP program for those devices that don't meet the criteria for the breakthrough, we can help you with that as well. We have templates for the STEP program and uh, there are very similar benefits and it will also help with investors and identifying somebody at the FDA that's going to be um, making sure that your project doesn't get stalled. And it also allows the sprint. So there are all the same benefits, just a different title. It's a step program instead of the breakthrough program. I hope that answers your questions. And if you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to click on the link below or ask it, make any comments about what you'd like as a future video. And we'd be happy to help with that. And on Tuesday, we'll be re-releasing our blog on the breakthrough, giving you updated data from 2020 uh, up through 2023, because the last time we had updated, I think it was 2021. So a couple more years of data, and it looks like this is going to be the banner year for, for the breakthrough program, the most number of breakthroughs that they've created yet. Uh, it's a little early. We still have three more quarters to go um, of data, but it's looking good so far. Hope that was helpful to you and have a great day. Bye-bye.